To create my web page, I'm going to use the simplest of applications. I'm going to use Notepad. There are lots of applications out there which can make building web pages and in fact whole websites much easier. But this video is about HTML. So I think using something as simple as Notepad will help us to understand it a lot better. I'm going to start by typing out my nursery rhyme then. The owl and the pussycat. Now, in order to see what this looks like as a web page, I need to save this as a HTML file. Before I do, I'm just going to make sure I've got somewhere to save it. I'm going to create a new folder, and everything to do with my website will go in that folder. So I'm going to use a file explorer here. And here's my documents folder, and let's make a new one in there called Nursery Rhymes. Or Nursery Web. This is a folder to contain all of the files that have to do with my Nursery Rhymes website. And let's have a look inside that folder. Of course, it's empty. I haven't put anything in there yet. Something I strongly recommend you do is go to the View tab and switch on file name extensions. This tick box is off by default. Windows doesn't let you see the file extensions when you're in a file explorer. We could really do with seeing those. OK, so I'm ready to save my work. Into Notepad, File, Save As. And I'm going to change the Save As type to All Files. And now I'm going to give the file a name. Nursery Rhymes dot html the html is very very important that's what tells windows that this is a html file and it should be displayed in a web browser and let's make sure i'm saving it in the folder that i've created let's take a look in that folder you can see it's there and windows recognizes the extension as a web page so windows knows it's going to open it up with a web browser in this case google chrome a double click will open that up in the browser for me. And there it is. Now you're thinking, it doesn't look anything like what was typed. And you're absolutely right, it doesn't. When you save something as a HTML file, all you're saving is text. It is nothing but pure text. In fact, a HTML file is nothing but the text characters that you can see on the keyboard. When I was typing this up in Notepad, I pressed the Enter key at the end of each line. And what Notepad did was to put an invisible code at the end of each line to say, let's start a new line. But when you save this as HTML, those hidden codes don't get saved. In fact, it really doesn't matter where those hidden codes are. I just mess this up a little bit here. It looks a complete mess in Notepad. I'm going to resave that. I don't need to do save as this time, just save because I've already given it a name. Come back to my browser and reload the page using this little button here. It makes hardly any difference whatsoever. I can see I've lost a space there. Let's tidy this up anyway so I can see it a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some HTML inside this document so the browser knows how to display it. We'll start with something called the paragraph tag. This code here, a P in angle brackets, is HTML and it says here comes a new paragraph. A P in angle brackets with a slash in front of the P is called the closing tag. That says that's the end of the paragraph. HTML tags usually come in pairs like this. So let's make each line of our nursery rhyme a new paragraph. Now I can speed things up with a little bit of copying and pasting. Let's copy that, Control c to copy, and I'll paste that at the beginning of each line. And the slash p inside angle brackets, I'll paste 
at the end of each line. Control V to paste, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So there we go. Each line of my web page is now a new paragraph. Let's save this. Back to the browser and reload the page. And now it's looking the way I want it to look. So what I'm actually doing here is I am marking up my text to let the web browser know how to display it. That's why it's called the hypertext markup language. Now I'd really like the very first line, the title, to be displayed as a heading. So I'm going to use a slightly different tag this time. I'm going to use the heading 1 tag. That's H1 and then at the end of the line slash H1. As I've already said, HTML tags usually come in pairs. Let's see the effect of the heading 1 tag. Save the document first. Back to my web browser, reload the page and you can see that standing out like a title now. There are actually a number of different heading tags you can use. Let's see what H2 looks like. Resave it. Reload the page. Perhaps that's a little bit better. And just to emphasize the point, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull all of this onto, well, maybe the same line. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put a line break there, pull that up. I'll put a line break there. It looks a complete mess in Notepad, but all I've actually done is change the layout in Notepad. If I resave this and reload the page in the browser, no difference. And again, this makes the point that the web browser is looking for HTML to decide how to display it. The only reason I'm displaying it neatly inside Notepad is so that I can read it more easily. Let's just tidy this up a little bit. Even though, as far as the web browser is concerned, it makes no difference whatsoever. So there it is, the hypertext markup language. In the next video, I'll show you how to add an image to this. In the meantime, I suggest you give this a go yourself. Maybe try the different heading tags H1, H2, H3, H4. See what they look like. See which one you prefer.